sebentar ma. My husband had lost his job due to a back injury. I was diagnosed a long time ago with Crohn's disease, but I'd gotten really sick, couldn't work anymore. We needed a place to stay, so we decided we'd take the house. Uh, it used to be uh, what they called veterans housing. We had our first son together. His name is Jordan. When we moved into the house, the first thing I remember is we couldn't get our mattress up the stairs. Um, it was too narrow of an area. We had to sleep all on the sofa bed. I woke up to smelling like flowers, like roses. I'm a Christian, and it was always said that if you smell flowers or roses, it could be the Holy Spirit. So I tried to maybe think it was something like that, but it didn't feel uh, refreshing because it smelled more like when you go to a funeral home like death. It was very uneasy. Um, it was uneasy that I made the statement all the time that I don't feel like this is our home. I can't put my finger on. I just couldn't figure it out what it was about the house. The family had not been living in the house long before Don noticed Jordan was displaying some disturbing behavior. Jordan was playing on the stairs inside the hallway. At the bottom of the stairs was a rocking chair. Jordan got in the chair and would swing back and forth and say, Baby hurt, baby hurt, baby hurt, baby hurt. Over and over again. And I'd say, Jordan, what do you mean by that? Baby hurt, baby hurt. And he said, the baby got hurt. He said, yeah, there's a little girl standing there at the top of the stairs. Baby hurt, baby hurt. And I said, uh, I don't see her. He said, look, Mama, there's Allie. Allie was my neighbor's daughter that passed away. I had heard about my neighbor's daughter probably about a month after living there. She had died at four. She was only four years old. It, it was just some sort of weird virus and medication, but she had died in the house. Jordan did not know who she was or her name. There was no way that he knew, but that wasn't the first time he told me things that there was no way he could possibly know. With Jordan's behavior on her mind, Dawn confided in a new friend. She had ended up telling me that she was into witchcraft. She started to say to me, well, maybe if you use tarot cards, you can get some answers. She gave me a book and she gave me the cards. And I took them home and I started playing with them. I would ask questions to the cards. I just kept wondering if, you know, he was really seeing Allie, what he was really seeing. It can be dangerous for people to use spiritual divination tools such as tarot if they don't have the knowledge or know-how and, and how to use these items. You can open doorways, um, hauntings can begin, entities can come through and actually attach themselves to the people that are using these tools. Don's dabbling with the tarot cards seemed to make the situation worse. With Jordan, his room was very uncomfortable for everybody. Nobody could stay in that room. Jordan didn't want to sleep in that room. One time he told me he saw our whole family. It was a mother, a son, and a daughter with bullet wounds in their head. And then all of a sudden, all those were gone, and the only one there was one he called the man. Don Pierce's family had moved into a new home and immediately started experiencing paranormal activity. Don's young son had started seeing the ghost of a child. Baby hug, baby hug. Then he started seeing other phantoms in his bedroom. 
One time he told me he saw our whole family. It was a mother, a son, and a daughter with bullet wounds in their head. And then all of a sudden, all those were gone, and the only one there was one he called the man. And the man wasn't very nice. And the man said some terrible things, and the man told him to tell me horrific things. He says, the man told me to tell you as long as you live here, he's going to keep you sick and make sure you stay sick. My husband's like, why don't you throw a recorder in Jordan's room and see what you get? So I said, OK, that's a good idea. I put the recorder in the room. Nobody was home, and I put it on top of a Bible. And when I went and I rewinded my recorder and listened, I heard the worst. I can't even, it, it still plays. It was like the most blood curdling thing I heard it say. It was just like the most evilest thing I've ever heard. Like it's in, engraved in my brain to this day. It was scary because I'm thinking, what did I do to open these doors? Terrified, Dawn started looking into ways of protecting her family. I just kind of learned about some prayers of protection, and one of them was Psalm 91. My son was taking a bath. And all of a sudden, it was like his eyes looked different, like he looked sinister. And he seemed to get, like, super strong, and it wasn't, it wasn't him. I knew it wasn't him. So I opened the Bible and I started reading Psalm 91 as I did. He started thrashing around in the tub and he's like, you shut up, you dumb whore, bitch, call me all kinds of names. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want to me to lie down in the pastures. He leaves me And eventually it stopped. It might have been just one or two minutes, but it seemed like the, the longest one or two minutes. And when it broke, he started crying and he said, mommy, mommy, that wasn't me, that wasn't me. When you're trying to protect your child, you do anything to protect them. But when you can't see or physically feel what's attacking them, you feel hopeless and helpless. At this point, Dawn was desperate to get help for her son. And at that time, that's when I met Joe. She was telling us that she believed that her home was haunted and that her son was seeing things and he was talking to spirits. Dawn had mentioned a couple of different smells in the house. Just before a spirit may show up, you will smell um, a flower of some sort, and, and it's usually roses and lilacs. Jordan believed that a little spirit, a little female, was speaking to him. A child could relate to a child spirit. The spirit of a girl that had passed away was trying to come through, and the only way she could get anybody's attention was to go with somebody that was more on her mentality, or more on her wavelength, which would be another child. As the unraveling started, and I started asking a bunch of questions, then certain things were like, okay, tarot cards. She had dabbled into a few things, and then everything was starting to get put back into perspective. If somebody is playing with tarot cards, they're divination tools. Those are tools to communicate with those that have passed. A lot of times, people just play with cards. Every so often, somebody makes a connection and a door does open. We have this thing in, in the paranormal that if, if something comes back, sometimes it can come back two, three times worse than it was originally. I will fear no evil. It sounded like that's what happened. The game plan was to go find something. 
If something was there, we would try to pull it out. If not, we'd like to get some sort of evidence, just something to go on to show us that um, there is something supernatural happening in the home. We spent about, I'd say, a good four or five hours of investigating. The very last sequence was in the basement. We set up cameras, we set up our video equipment, we took lots of pictures. I didn't have a good feeling going into the basement. I kind of felt, it's almost like when you have the hair on the back of your neck stand up. It was one of those things and I'm like, you know what, uh, let's go down here and let's check this out. Initially, I don't like to hit people with prayer right off the bat. I don't want to come off as anybody that's too religious or trying to make something out of nothing. But I felt compelled to pray into the house, in, in, into the basement, and that's what we did. And when Joe had called me about two days later and said, I got something to play for you, you're going to... You know, it's gonna knock your socks off, basically. At the very end of the tape, just before it ran out, I heard us saying the prayer. Now a house of Christ, thank you, and you are no longer welcome here, evil spirit. And you know you must obey our commands. Dawn Pierce's life changed when her son Jordan began seeing the ghost of a child in their home. Run is over. Sure. After unsuccessfully trying to get rid of the spirit herself, Dawn called in professional paranormal investigator Joe Citrone. At the very end of the tape, just before it ran out, I heard us saying the prayer. Now a house of Christ, and you are no longer welcome here, evil spirit. And you know you must obey our commands. And right during that time, over what we were saying was a loud growl, a human growl that sounded like a mule being kicked. And you know you must obey our commands. It was just the most god awful, loud scream like an animal was being tortured. And you know you must obey our commands. It is definitely an inhuman sound that came over that recorder. But I felt relieved because it validated what we've been going through. There is something supernatural happening in the home. Not long after Joe had investigated the home, the Pierce family were spending a normal evening together. My husband, me, and Jordan were in my bedroom. My husband was on the computer. I was laying on the bed with Jordan, and I was reading through the Bible, and I started to read it out loud to him. He started thrashing around on the bed and hitting me and, you know, yelling obscenities. And I yelled, Mark, Mark, come over here, help me. He came over and he was restraining Jordan and he said to me, just keep reading, just keep going. He was very strong, and then all of a sudden, he just stopped. Cried, and again, you know, explaining that was not him. And I didn't know what to do with Jordan at that point. I was just sitting there frustrated. And that must be hard for you. You know 
Were you blaming your son? I was blaming myself. What did I do to open these doors? I felt like my curiosity maybe opened it, but I knew that there was something there from when we moved in. Things just weren't going to get any better, and we had had enough. We spent four years in the house, so there was a lot of different things that happened. He was young at the time, and I thought maybe he would forget, but he still hasn't forgotten. It was my first child, and um, I, I just, I still blame myself because he has problems with PTSD, and you can't tell a psychiatrist he wants to tell somebody why he's the way he is, and instead he has to deal with medication. He'll be 13. But now he's been back to out on sleeping on the couch. He, he doesn't want to sleep in his own room. After what he's experienced, he wants to go back in my room. He can't sleep without the lights on. Um, he can still hear things. He can't see them. Um, he's become a little bit more closed off, but he's very paranoid, um, very anxious. Um, a lot of anxiety. Um, I thank God that we did move. I didn't want to keep living there and uh, live to be tortured every day.